this morning? Amen. Amen. Got a lot of scripture. I don't know if I'll read it all or not, but 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Not going to read the entire chapter, but we are going to read quite a bit of scripture here. 1 Samuel 17. Going to start in the 19th verse. Going to talk about David and Goliath. Now this is something that from the time that we were in Sunday school, we heard the story of David and Goliath. We've sang songs about it. We've heard sermons about it. We've, as children, we, we did coloring pages and, and workbooks and different things that we would have in church about David and Goliath. So it's very familiar to us. But if you're out there this morning and you think, well, I've done heard about David and Goliath. I don't want to hear no more about it. God's Word always has something new for us. Amen? No matter how many times you have read the Word of God, you can pick it up and read the same Scripture that you've read over and over and get something new. The Lord will show you something. Not that it's a new thing as far as it wasn't there before. It was there before. But the Lord just allows you to see it. Amen? Hallelujah. Today we're going to look at a perfect picture and example of leaning to the arm of the flesh and having faith in God. We see in this story, we see that Saul is a perfect picture of the flesh. I don't know about you, but once I'm dead and gone, I'd hate to be the one to use an example to be a perfect picture of the flesh. Amen? But... Saul was leaning to the arm of the flesh. The army of Israel was leaning to the arm of the flesh. And we'll see what kind of what that what that caused to transpire in their in their battle with the Philistines. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 17 and 21. 1 Samuel 17 and 19, I'm sorry. Now Saul and they. Now if you read the first part of this chapter, and I encourage you to do so later. It says, Saul and they, it's talking about the three oldest sons of Jesse that had went to the battle. Now Saul and they, and all of the men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And the Bible says that David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper. Now David, he didn't go down to the battle to fight, but his father asked him to take some food down there to his brothers down there to the battle. So David gets up and he leaves his sheep with the keeper and he took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench. Now, I don't want you to miss this. And he came to the trench and as the host was going forth to the, to the fight, talking about the men of Israel that were going forth to the fight as they were leaving the trench, the Bible says as they were going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Now that means if you look that up in the, in the uh, Hebrew that talking about a battle cry. That's talking about a shout. These men were making some noise. These men had a battle cry. Now, if you've been around Pentecost as long as I have, from time to time you'll hear a Pentecostal charismatic-esque preacher and he'll talk about giving out a lion's roar to defeat the devil. He'll talk about giving out a battle cry. I've heard preachers preach entire sermons on giving a battle cry that will defeat the devil. Shout in the devil's ear. Defeat the devil with a shout. We'll find out in this story of David and Goliath that the enemy, Brother Bubby, is not intimidated by noise. Amen. Amen. He doesn't. You, you can't intimidate or scare him with your shout and with your noise. I'll tell you what does him intimidate the devil. I'll tell you what does scare the devil, and that is faith. Amen? Faith. And like I said, I've seen preacher after preacher, especially in the Pentecostal movement, say, okay, when I count to three, we're going to give the loudest lion shout we can give, and God's going to give us the victory. You can't defeat the devil with a shout. Oh, hallelujah. Heard one preacher say not too long ago, there's still deliverance in the dance. You can't get delivered with the dance. You can't have victory over the devil with a shout and with a dance. You know me. I'm your pastor. Have been for some time. I love to shout. I get excited and I like to dance. But that's not what defeats the enemy. 
These men of the army of Israel, they had a shout. Oh, they gave the battle cry. They were making a lot of noise, but we'll find out here in a minute that it didn't intimidate their enemy. Watch it say. It says, For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage. Now David's down there now. David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Now listen. And as he talked with them, as David has, has came to the camp to bring some bologna, cheese, crackers, loaf of bread, whatever it is he took them down there to eat. I think he did take them some cheese. But whatever he took them down there to eat and to nourish them, as he's standing there talking to them. Now remember, the men of Israel, they already left up out of their trench. And they march and they, oh, they're, hot, they're giving out a, a battle cry. Amen. They're making some noise. Surely this will intimidate the enemy. David's standing there. He leaves, the, he leaves his carriage with somebody. He comes up. He saluted his brethren. He's standing there talking. The Bible says, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. Now if you'll read the first part of this chapter. And we could have read that. But I'll tell you what it says. For 40 days. Two times a day. Goliath came out. In front of all of the army of Israel. And beat his chest. And he said I defy the army of Israel. And he challenged them. And said send me out a man to fight. And if he can defeat me. We will serve you. But if I defeat him, you will serve us. He done this day after day with the same result, the same reaction from the army of Israel. What does it say that the army of Israel did in verse 24? And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Earlier in the chapter, it says they were afraid and dismayed. So here comes this champion of the Philistines. As he had done two times a day for 40 days, he comes out and he begins to taunt and make fun of God's people. He begins to beat his chest. But this time, today, there would be something different. Today, there was a man of faith in the camp. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Not a man who had faith in the army and the intelligence and the strength of the, of the army of Israel. Not a man who had, who had faith in Saul and his leadership. Where's Saul at? We'll find him in a minute in his tent. But a man who had faith in his God. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but don't let me lose you this morning. We'll get back to this here in just a minute or two. But all, of, all that the army of Israel could see was Goliath. But all that David could see was his God. <laughs> all that David could see was the size of his God. But all that Israel could see, even with their shout. Now you see how good their shout, what it did for them. They had shouted the roar, the battle cry, the lion's roar. They were making noise. And as soon as Goliath showed his ugly face, they turned tail and ran back to the foxhole and hid. Why? Because they were trusting in the arm of the flesh. All they could see, Brother Rodney, is how it was impossible in the natural or in the flesh for them to defeat this man. David was not leaning to the arm of the flesh, but David was a man of faith. And this time, whenever this old snake sticks his head up out of the hole, he stuck it up on the wrong day. Today, David was in the camp. And the Bible says, it says that, and as he talked, to them. I'm talking about David behold talking about the Philistine came up and he did said he was going to do the same thing and the Bible says that David heard him 
Hallelujah. David heard the words of this man. Hallelujah. The devil, see, is not intimidated by your noise. The devil is not afraid or scared of your noise. What intimidates the devil is faith. And only one kind of faith intimidates or scares the devil. It's not faith in the flesh. It's not faith in man. It's not faith in carnal weapons. It's not faith in your ability to shout. It's not your faith in your ability to dance. It's not your faith in your favorite preacher. It is faith for us today. It is faith in what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. That is what has already defeated the devil. So when our faith is placed there, the devil is intimidated and scared of that. If he can get you to put your faith anywhere else today, oh, he can work with you. He can work on you. Hallelujah. And see, this had been going on day after day, two times a day. But today was different because there was a man of faith in the camp. A man who would not run from the enemy. Not because of his faith in himself, but because of his faith in his God. Listen to what the men of Israel said to, in verse 25, what the men of Israel said to David. In verse 25 it says, The men of Israel, they say to David, Have you not, have you seen this man? <laughs> David arrives, a little old ruddy David, carrying his basket full of food, brings it up to the trench where these men of war, these men of, supposed to be brave, strong men are at, and there he is, the least of the least. And he's wanting to know why somebody ain't doing something. Oh, glory to God. And they say, have you not seen this man? See, that's all they could see. <coughs> is how big Goliath was. How strong Goliath was. What Goliath could do. Instead of what their God could do. And they said to David, they said, have you not seen this man? Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, talking about this is what the king would do to the man who kills the giant. The Bible says the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter. Later on, I don't know if David thought that was a blessing or not. Will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Have you seen this man? That's all they could see. Write that down in your notes. Have you seen this man? That's all they could see. And David spake to the men. Where am I at? Verse 26. David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done unto the man that killeth this Philistine? And the Bible says they told him the same. Well, David, don't let me, yeah, I'm about to skip something. To this, to this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel. Now listen what he says here. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I'm still in verse 26. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? See, Goliath done messed up. He'd been sticking his head up and hollering boo and all of the men of Israel been hollering ah! and running back to the trench, running back to the foxhole and hiding. But today, he stuck his head up and hollered boo and there was a man in the camp who believed his God was more than able to take care of this giant who believed that in comparison to his God, this giant was a tiny man. Amen. Compared to the, to the power and, 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 the, and the, the strength of his God. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares to defy the army of the living God? Goliath done messed up. Now his brother rebukes him and says, why would you leave those few little sheep? What are you doing down here? I know of your pride and things. Really what bothered his brother was that David had enough faith to say, who is this? Who is this man that thinks he can defy God? Defy the army of the living God. I think there was some conviction that gripped the heart of that Frady cat, his brother, that was bigger than David, that was stronger than David, that knew more about fighting than David, that knew more about war than David, but he didn't know about David's God. Hallelujah! He didn't know about David's God. Amen? Hallelujah! He had his eyes on Goliath, so he rebukes David. And David answers him in verse 29 and says, What have I now done? He was saying the things that Israel should have been saying. Is there not a cause? You see, there was a man of faith in the camp. 
Oh, that's what his brother saw, and that's what offended his brother. Go down to verse 31. And when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. In other words, they said, hey, do you hear what David said? Go tell Saul what David said. Saul sends for David. And the Bible says, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Talking about Goliath. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not, listen, Saul is a perfect picture of the flesh. He says, Saul says to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a, a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You are not able to do it. David already knew he was not able to do it. Saul wasn't telling him anything he didn't know. David knew within himself if he went out there to face this giant, he would destroy him. If he was leaning to the arm of the flesh. David said, you, uh, Saul said, David, you ain't able to do it. You're not able. What a perfect picture of the flesh. And David said unto Saul, now he says, Saul, sit down a minute. Let me testify to you. Let me tell you about my God. Hallelujah. When somebody tells you that the situation is impossible, that there ain't no way God can do it, that there ain't no way you're going to survive, that Brother Jim, there ain't no way this thing's going to turn out for you good, that there ain't no way that God is with you, that there ain't no way you'll get the victory, tell them, sit down for a minute and let me testify. Amen. David begins to tell Saul how that as he watched the sheep, uh, here come a bear uh, and took a sheep. Uh, here come a, 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 a lion uh, and took a sheep. Uh, and David said, I went out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Lord delivered, uh, hallelujah, the, 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 uh, he delivered the lion into my hand. Uh, he delivered the bear into my hand. He said, let me testify to you, Saul. Let me tell you about my God. He said, there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Now I'm going to verse 35. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, listen what it says, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, and don't miss this, verse 37, David said, moreover, what's he say there, church? The Lord can you underline that in your Bible or write it in your notes? The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go and the Lord be with thee. Go and the Lord be with thee. David said, My God is more than able to do this. My God is more than able to do this. Amen. My God that delivered me out of the hand of the lion, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, that delivered me out of the paw of the bear, he is more than able to deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. God is more than able. So Saul says, okay, David. Okay. You can go and the Lord be with you. Listen to what it says next. Where am I at, church? Verse 38. Verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head. And he armed him with a cold mail. So Saul says, okay, David, you can go and fight the giant. Here, let me put my armor on you. And I want to ask you a question this morning. Why? Apparently that armor wasn't doing Saul any good. Amen. No doubt it didn't even fit David. The Bible says Saul was head and shoulders above every man in Israel. That means he was the biggest. He was the tallest. David was small. Ruddy. And here he is. Saul trying to put these weapons of the flesh, these carnal weapons... 
to fight what was really, Brother Jim, a spiritual battle. This was not a natural enemy. This was a spiritual enemy. There was a force of darkness behind the Philistines. The powers of evil. And there was only one way that that could be defeated. And it was not with the weapons, the carnal weapons of man. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are spiritual. Amen. Pulling down strongholds. Glory to God. We have spiritual, but we have a spiritual victory today. So David, he puts on the armor of Saul and he's staggered around there. And we'll find out that he can't go in that. What? We see Saul here, a picture of the flesh. His armor, a picture of the weapon, carnal weapons of the flesh. But this was a spiritual battle. The Bible says David girded his sword, talking about Saul's mess. Girded his sword upon his armor. Listen to what he says. And he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said, listen to what he tells Saul. I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Oh, I wish we could get that this morning. If we see here a picture of the flesh in Saul, if we see here a picture of carnal weaponry in Saul's armor, his shield, his sword, and everything else he had to offer, David looks around. He assays the situation. He says, wait a minute, Saul. These things won't work. These carnal weapons won't work. Your lion's roar won't work. Your battle cry won't work. Your jump in the pew won't work. Your shouting won't work. The things in the natural, the things man devises as weapons will not work. David put them off. We better learn to do the same. Amen. If we are leaning to the arm of the flesh and trusting in carnal weapons, we surely will walk around defeated and lose the battle. Glory to God. But if we'll realize our victory is not in carnal weapons. Our victory is not in man-made devices. Our victory is in faith in the one who has won the victory. Hallelujah. And when we go forth in that faith, our enemy is already defeated. Amen. Jesus already defeated the enemy. Glory to God. I've heard people testify. I've been trying to defeat the devil all week. Stop trying to defeat him. He's already defeated. And walk in the victory that Jesus Christ has for you through his finished work on the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. David says, I can't wear this stuff. I got to get this mess off. I don't have any faith in these things. I don't have any faith in the carnal weapons of the flesh. But what I do have faith, who I do have faith in is my God. I have faith in my God. Listen to this. You see, David knew. David knew. <laughs> well, I can't tell you that yet. I'll get ahead of myself. Verse 40. The Bible says David took his staff and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near the Philistine. Now we see David has his staff, his sling, his rocks, his shepherd's bag. The greatest weapon that David had that day was faith. Amen. The greatest weapon that David had that day was faith. So he goes forth to meet the Philistine. Listen to what it says. And the Philistine came. They probably told him and said, Hey, Goliath, they finally sending somebody out to face you. And the Bible says the Philistine came and he drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David... He disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy. And he, the Bible says, in, in, of, and of a fair countenance. In the natural, David was no match for Goliath. But in the spirit, in the spiritual, Goliath was no match for David's God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I wish I could preach this morning. Hallelujah. 
Verse 43, the Philistine begins to talk to David, make fun of him. He says, the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog? Am I a dog that they send out this kid that has these staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Let me ask you this morning. How much screaming and shouting of the battle cry do you think you would need to do to defeat the devil? How much dancing do you think you would need to do to defeat the devil? How many pews do you think you would need to jump in order to defeat the devil? Listen, I may dance today, but it's not to defeat the devil. I dance because the devil is already defeated. <laughs> oh, I might get beside of myself this morning. I said, I dance and I shout. I might even jump a pew. Going to have to lose a little more of this if I do. I might even jump a pew, but if I do, it won't be to defeat the devil. It'll be, Brother Rodney, because the devil is already defeated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's already a defeated foe. It take a whole lot of screaming and hollering. You can scream till your eyeballs fall out. That won't intimidate the devil. Amen. You can stomp till your feet get sore. That won't intimidate the devil. But faith is a giant slayer. One kind of faith. Not faith in the flesh, not faith in religion, not faith in flesh, not faith in self. All faith in the one who has won the victory. Faith in the one who has won the victory. And then David says to him, oh, you're right, I'm scared. I'm going to go back and get in the hole with the others. No, the Bible says, David said to him, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Listen to him now. This is faith speaking. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the earth. Listen, that all of the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all of this assembly, who's he talking about? He's talking about those that were looking upon, those that were watching this. And all of this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword, not with a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he, oh, hallelujah, the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So that all of these men that are hiding in their foxhole, all of these men that are hiding and afraid of, of what this giant can do, God's going to give us the victory so that you, that, that God will get the glory over you and that this assembly will see that God is greater than any enemy that we might face, uh, that God has already defeated our foe. David said, he's going to give you into my hands the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. We need to get a hold of that. We spend most of our time trying to fight a battle that has already been won. Can I say that again this morning? We spend too much time trying to fight a battle that has already been won. Glory to God. Hallelujah. David knew that his God was more than able. Amen? And that the battle was not his. Saul said, David, you ain't able. Saul, David probably would have thought, I know that. Amen? I know that. But I know one who is. But if David had went out there in Saul's armor, in those weapons, those carnal weapons of the flesh, and tried to defeat this enemy, Goliath would have no doubt fed his flesh to the buzzards just like he promised him he would do. Amen? That's exactly what will happen to you. If you go around trying to defeat a defeated foe with carnal weapons to try and get you the victory. If we trust in the arm of the flesh, we will surely walk around in defeat. And if we lose sight of where our victory is, 
We will be found hiding in the trench just like Israel was, afraid of the devil. Listen to me this morning. Don't, don't, don't miss this. I didn't get this from nobody else but the Holy Spirit. David knew that his God was greater than any enemy that he might face. David knew that his God was greater than this enemy he was facing now. As far as David was concerned, Goliath was already dead. As far, listen, read, go back and read. You don't have to do it right now. I'm getting ready to close. Go back and read the words of David and how he said those things. As far as David was concerned, the battle was already won. As far as David was concerned, the enemy was already defeated. I hope you don't miss this this morning. 2,000 years ago, our captain, our savior, decapitated, cut off the head of our foe. Our foe, our enemy, has already been defeated. We don't need to defeat him. We just need to have our faith in the one who got the victory over him. Hallelujah. We need to rest in that faith. Walk in that faith. Trust in that. That his victory has already defeated, defeated our foe. David said the battle is not mine. It is the Lord's. Goliath was already dead in the eyes of David. And our God today is greater than the enemy that we faced. And like I said, as a matter of fact, Jesus decapitated our enemy 2,000 years ago with his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Amen. He made a show of them openly. He defeated the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Faith in that and that alone makes us the victor today. When our faith... That is where our faith must stay. And when our faith is put in anything else, we will not have the victory. We will find ourselves struggling day in and day out because we are leaning to the arm of the flesh and leaning to the weapons of the flesh when our enemy is already dead. <laughs> he is already defeated. And I know he ain't literally dead as far as He's still around. He goes to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. At the end, he'll be thrown into the lake of fire to be tormented forever and ever. But I'm talking about as far as defeating you goes, our enemy is already defeated. Jesus Christ defeated him when he said it is finished on Calvary's hill 2,000 years ago. And if we can get our own stubborn, stupid, carnal mind to get a, a glimpse of that, to wrap itself around that, I don't have to defeat the devil. He's already defeated. Jesus did that. I just got to believe. I just got to have faith in the finished work of the cross. I've got to walk in that. I've got to rest in that. And we know how the story ends. David goes out. He defeats Goliath. He cuts his head off. All because the Lord was with David and David's faith was not in the arm of the flesh. It was in the Lord. Turn over to 2 Chronicles 32. And let me leave you with these two scriptures. Or just write them down in your notes. Read them later. We must ever keep our faith in the finished work of the cross. And in doing so, we will see our enemy as already defeated, already decapitated, and we will walk in the victory. But not if we lean to the arm of the flesh. And we find, who is this, King Hezekiah? Yeah. Second Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Let me leave you with this. Oh, if you could get a hold of this this morning. You might sit there and think, I didn't like nothing he said except that last part. Oh, because this here is good. Of course, all of it is good. Second, Second Chronicles, I'm sorry, 32 and 7. I did tell you Second Chronicles, didn't I? 2 Chronicles 32 and 7. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed. See, you remember the Bible says that the armies of Israel were afraid and dismayed because of the enemy. Be not afraid or dismayed. This is another enemy. For the king of Assyria and for all of the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. Listen to what he says in verse 8. With him is what? 
an arm of flesh, carnal weapons. But with us is the Lord our God to help us. And to what? To fight our battles. The battle is not mine, David said. It is the Lord. To fight our battles. And what's it say next? And the peoples rested themselves upon the word of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Sink your teeth into that. Hezekiah said, Be not afraid or dismayed because of the king of Assyria and all those that are with him, because there's more with us than that there is with them. Then he tells them that the Lord is with us. The Lord our God is with us to help us and to fight our battle. And the people rested themselves upon the words of King Hezekiah, uh, the, Hezekiah the king of Judah. Rest upon these words that I have so pitifully tried to bring to you today that the battle is not yours, that the victory was won on Calvary, and we can rest in those words. There's three words we can rest in this morning. There's a whole bunch of them. We can narrow it down to three. It is finished. Amen. Hallelujah. It is finished. Rest in those words today. Rest in the fact that your enemy has been defeated by Jesus Christ, by what he did on the cross of Calvary. Rest in the fact today that as long as your faith is in him, you are the victor because that victory in his finished work causes you to be victorious. Rest upon these words today. It is finished. You don't have to defeat the devil. Jesus already did that. Countless preachers have written bestsellers telling the church how to get victory over the devil. Such silly things like if you'll fast every day, if you'll take communion every day, if you'll Use these certain words and mantras. If you quote these certain scriptures and all these different things that they use as some kind of a, I don't like using this word, as some kind of a magic potion to give you the victory over the devil. If you'll do these seven steps, if you'll do these 12 steps, if you'll say these certain words, if you'll do these certain things, you can have victory over the devil. I got news for you today. The only way you're ever going to have victory over the devil is if your faith is placed in the finished work of the cross of Calvary because that is where victory was won. Amen. That is where victory was won. Amen. Hallelujah. Rest in that. Trust in that. Walk in that. The battle is the Lord's. And the giant is dead. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the battle is the Lord's. And the giant is dead. Oh, hallelujah. If you're out there today under the sound of my voice. And you've been trying all that. You bought Joel's book. Rick's book, Joseph's book, whoever's book, and it pointed you to other sources of victory outside of Jesus and what he did on the cross. Stop leaning to those things. Matter of fact, you'd be better off if you just took those things and burn them in the burn barrel. Somebody texted me the other day and said, what about this book, what about this book? I said, yeah, I wouldn't recommend those. Should I give them to somebody else? I said, I'd throw them away. Amen. Amen. I'd throw them away. I'd get rid of them. That way nobody else gets a hold of the garbage. If you've been trying all those things and you're still defeated, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners who plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. If you'll keep your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did, on the cross of Calvary, you will walk in victory. You will realize that the battle is not in the, the victory is not in the arm of the flesh, but in faith in what Jesus Christ has done. And if you're out there today and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, I want to give you the invitation to put your faith in Jesus Christ today before it's too late. I've had people tell me over the years, they'd say, Preacher, I I've come to church sometime. I'll I've been meaning to come to church. So sooner or later I'll get there. You may run out of laters. 
Don't put off your salvation. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right where you're at right now, put your faith in Jesus. You can say this prayer, pray this prayer, or one like it. Just talk to the Lord in your own words, but you must do it in faith believing. You can say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you won the victory for me. I believe you were buried on the third day. You rose again. That you're the way, the truth, and the life. And if you will believe that, He will save your soul. If we can help you with that in any way, you can get in touch with us here. and We'd love to help you. Somebody else this morning have something before we go.